customer. He tried to do an IAG aerial separator install himself. This is bad. Do you see all of the aluminum powder? It goes straight into the oil pan. Uh, Not saying it would blow up instantly, but you have a pretty high chance of a failure. The amount of metal in that thing is crazy. Green lights and pull that engine. See, other cars, some of them you have to be careful about. These are so well supported differential wise that they just don't care. Nice and easy. Always recommend you keep your jack in good condition. 3 a.m. is the best time to take it for a walk around the block. I need the most important tool in this process. Bendy 14. They go like this. Dude, I was getting there. I'm giving a battery tutorial removal. We're done. Engine's ready to pull. Psych! Jeez Louise! That'll come off later. I think I need a special tool for that. Is it my electric ratchet? Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is gonna be so much fun. I like do like three engine pulls in a week and it's like back of my hand and then we'll go on our brakes like these. All of a sudden I'm like, what am I doing? Not actually, I know what I'm doing, but I have to take it step by step. Now we're pulling the front harness. <sighs> this is really hard to get to. Can't get my hand in there. <gasps> Yes! Just putting my tools away. Who should I film today? Here's Liam, Zach over there. I think I feel powerful. I write the script now. This thing's too fancy. I don't know how this works. I feel like Zach's gonna get mad at me for filming. What are you doing? Working on a car. Okay, he's not mad. He laughed. We're good. Car. I'm working on my skills. You, you work on the car. Face reveal? I made sure to keep the audience indulged while you were away. Don't break, don't break. Yay. Power tools make life so much easier, but then they can't fit anywhere. My brain works in odd ways. I didn't even need to pull that yet, but I did. Liam. I'm robbing you. That thing is chowdered. This car is like two years old. It's already a bell housing bolt. That's nice. This thing's being a pain in my bootay. Loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen, tighten. That is terrifying. Hey Liam, so this bell housing bolt is really tight when I'm loosening it. I'm gonna keep tightening and loosening. That's how I feel. I need WD-40. No, no. I made sure to wear a hat today because last time I was insecure. Huh? Get to work, dude. Shut the poop off. When we were outside, She's the dead. wind goes and my hairline just like Whoa. I'm wearing a hat for now, I'm gonna really film. Two options, you can either break this thing off in the block, but I really don't wanna do that because it's a starter bolt and that means that the starter only has one bolt in. <laughs> if I break it off in the block, the likelihood of me being able to actually remove it properly is a lot lower. If it's this one, which is normally the one that does it, I'm okay with breaking it off in the block and just not using one of the bolts because there's these transmissions have a notoriously large amount of bolts and they're not making much power, so it's not a big deal. Ideally, you'd like to have every single one of them, but if you're missing one, it's okay. 90% of the time when we're doing these pulls, it's because we're swapping the block, so it doesn't matter if it breaks off, I'll just order a new one. This one I have to save. Lots of back and forth, lots of WD-40. There's that brick wall. Found it again. Steven, I don't know if that bolt's gonna come out without breaking it, and I don't know if I wanna do that yet. Hey, I'll wait for Daniel, because then he can give us the permission or he can be the one to break it. Yeah, I'm kind of missing working on an RS motor right now because that thing was two seconds of my life. Easiest thing I've ever done. It's weird pulling a motor that looks this new. Um, so we got a problem. The long starter bolt on this WRX seized in the block. Not want to come out. Already? It's only like two years old. I know. I don't understand. The other valve housing bolts were also chowdered and or really, really, really tight. Okay. The long one that sits on top? Yeah. And I don't want to crack it off because it's a brand new block we're not replacing. And I don't know if we're going to be able to get it out real well. So, yeah. You can't fit the impact in there, can you? No. And I'll break it if I do. 
Well, there's only one option. It moves if you go inwards, but it hits a brick wall as you come out. Yeah, because the threads are gold. On the FA-24s, is it a through hole? Yeah. You might have to get your an oxy torch and just heat the entire section of that. I'm gonna have to take the entire intake manifold off because I'm gonna burn some really important stuff. Yeah, I don't wanna do that. How much force have you put in it so far? Enough. A bit of force. Yeah. Worst case, it's a through hole. I can just drill the thing out. Get the breaker bar and you're gonna take your life, but just work it back and forth. You're gonna hit a brick wall and just push it a little farther, then go back and then add some WD to it. That's what I've been doing, but with a regular ratchet. You're gonna have to force your way through. That's the only way, like. Okay, I'm just warning you, it's very possible it's gonna break with how long that bolt is. I understand, okay. we'll have to cut it. Yay, we have permission to break something. Should I use this instead? <laughs> no. It's time to play the game. Will. It snap. It just got real tight. Uh, brain break. Like and subscribe. Okay. I've healed. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. Why can't they make these cars taller? Ain't no way. Why did I grab the long socket? It's the best day of my life. <laughs> yeah, it's a little beat up. Did it fight you the whole way? Pretty much, and I got to a point where I was like, poop this, and just started success. It's peanut butter, jetted time. All right, back to work. Guys, please go to our channel and subscribe and like this video. Turn on those post notifications, please. Wait. It just came out from above me. That wasn't mine. I don't like this. So this car has a stock cat still, but he has an aftermarket, basically cat back. Normally when we put a, we call it a J pipe, they don't separate here like the factory does. And so they go all the way up to the turbo studs and the turbo studs and the FAs are notorious for never coming out. The way Subaru's designed it from factory is that you can split it here and not have to mess with these studs and yank the engine because they knew this was gonna happen, which makes it real simple. So I just have to do this two bolt flange gasket. Most of the time I can get this to drop down enough where I can just leave it in the car and I don't have to pull it back. Um, but sometimes we will just pull this whole piece out. It's just two gaskets, but it saves me from pulling the O2 sensors and just save some time in pulling all these studs and crap. It makes it real simple because where they have split it, will just pull straight up. I don't have to worry about it get caught on anything or anything else. It just goes straight vertical. And then he's got an aftermarket intake on this that'll just pop off. There's really not a whole lot to do on the bottom of these FAs. It's these two, this, drain the coolant, drain the oil, engine mount bolt. This is an auto, so we gotta pull CVT cooler, the lower two bell housing bolts, which Steven, these are gonna be awful to get to. I love draining coolant. I wouldn't call it a successful day, but it was a productive day, I guess. Liam got uh, M5 pretty much about wrapped up. He's not fully done, but that's a, quite a job. I didn't think it was gonna be like that. This is becoming more and more of a nightmare than we expected. I thought it was gonna be fairly easy. You know, it's 22 or 23 with not that many miles. You know, you live and you learn. We're coming to the end of the day, so tomorrow we'll probably come in the morning and try and knock this out. Hopefully everything goes smoother once the bell housing bolts are out. Uh, and then Saturn was knocked out today. Cut to tomorrow where we deal with that crap. I get my drain pan. I hate walking in coolant while I work. Is there anything else I have to do while I'm here? Yes, there is. Oh, and I see the FA24s, they switched to an aluminum turbo inlet housing instead of the plastic ones. That's nice of them. That was a big problem on the VAWXs. That would crack and it, the car would drive like crap or idle like crap. So Grimspeed and I think Cobb as well came out with aluminum ones to fix that. And it looks like Subaru just did it for themselves. So I was hoping to have this engine out by the time the guys got here, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I will say the gray looks better than any other color because it hides the plastic fenders really well. This, unlike the blues and the whites, ugh. disconnecting the radiator fans. There's one. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Oh, there's tens holding the bottom of the condenser on too. Okay. Good to know. I'm sure I could just do this through the front of the grill, but I'm already here. And I'm already through my first Red Bull of the day.
And I feel like I need another one. Yes. Radiator out. Normally we'd shove all this crap in the trunk. It's not even worth it because we're gonna have it essentially back in the car within a day or two. Now I have flex plate bolts I gotta take care of. And that still have that lower starter bolt I gotta deal with. So I'm gonna lower this down too fucking short. Don't buy an automatic WRX. They suck. I think Subaru calls it the Subaru SPT, Subaru Performance Transmission. It's a CVT. They all suck. When the guys told me these were galling, the first thing I thought of was, oh, I wonder if the CVT's already been replaced, because that would make sense. So the flex plate essentially replaces what the clutch and flywheel would be. This thing is suspiciously easy to turn over. And then we will have to pull a few of the transmission cooler lines. All right, so I'm pretty sure there's only four flex plate bolts. And that's how it has been on every Subaru since the dawn of time, but I'm just gonna make sure. Yep, four. Okay, flex plate bolts are out. I believe, besides the starter, that is all of them. Now we just got all the miscellaneous items here I need to take care of. The best way to learn a new platform is to just take an engine out. Although this one in particular is being a pain in the butt. What we learned from it is far more important. Well worth it. And although I have assembled an FA24 before, we put it in the VAWX behind you. Well, there's some differences there. Maybe that thing will run one day. Well, first I had to call Ken at IAG to figure out what size port originally it was that the guy damaged. It's a half inch British standard thread. And we're in the United States, so uh, BSP is not exactly common here. We're all NPT, but there's some slight differences between BSP and NPT. They're not interchangeable. You can't just stick a BSP fitting into an NPT Ford. It wouldn't work properly. So I looked up a helicoil kit and helicoil kit for a BSP thread is $260. And it's like over in the UK, but we'd have to ship it here. The only thing that that port needs to do for us since we're putting the IAG AOS in, it needs to have a 3 8 barb on the other side. My goal is to pull this out, clean all the metal shavings out, and try and tap it with half inch NPT because I can get an NPT to 3 8 barb adapter and heel coil kit here faster and far cheaper and save them a bit of money. Take my misery and use it for views. Thanks. That was dumb. Luckily, Daniel has AAA. You know what the worst part is, Liam? The instructions told you to use red Loctite. I did on the rear ones. The front ones, we ran out. He's capping. Because I remember you were like, oh, I don't want to run red on there because then I'll never be able to get them off. Well, they came out by themselves. Yeah, I'm going to show you what a good bolt looks like when you pull it out. That's what it's supposed to look like. That's what it's not supposed to look like. Especially when cars are about 10 years old, we'll have like one that does that on occasion, not Four. The other benefit of all this, you got a free sub out of it. Free sub. <laughs> the tow truck drivers. Oh, he subscribed? <laughs> <laughs> Man, most tow truck drivers are actually really chill. Oh, yeah. My left headlight is up and to the right. If I get close enough behind someone, I can see exactly what they're doing in their cabin. I'm just like, oh, I see what you look like. And then they always move out of the way. I am that asshole, but it's so worth it because I'm like, move. So I'll just get on their ass and then can't see anything because my headlights are there, so they'll move. <laughs> all right. You can crack the case. I already took the bell housing bolts out. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. All right, now we play the game of, is everything disconnected? All right, you can give the transmission a couple pumps there. Perfect. Hooray! Watch your connectors over there. We've got our work cut out for us on some of these bolts. Make sure you don't put the reluctor wheel on backwards. I had someone do that once because then the crankshaft position can never be read and the car won't start. And you gotta pull the transmission again. The fitting that he damaged sits behind this cover. I'll pull these tins out and I can show you what we were working with. Now I get to see if we can save that plate. It'd be really nice with it. And we're bending it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we did this. The oil drain to the pan is right down there. That is actually crazy. We probably just saved this man an engine. All of that would have gone into the engine. 
There's and there's still more in there. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to pull the pan off. Just dropping these left and right. Oh, there's a chair here now. Dude, this chair is awesome. Oh, this is probably gonna squirt everywhere. As you can tell, ours has been used frequently. She's glowing. Dear God. Can't tell if it's pulling it out yet or not. Oh no. Well, that one might be a lost cause. That is poop. Crazy. Mm. This would never happen on a BMW. That's about to snap. Never in my life have I had a super bolt this bad. Go ahead and loosen it up. It's not coming out, dude. I need to get this pipe out of the way so I can get to that thread. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is retapping the hole to a larger NPT thread. So we're moving the EGR out of the way. Okay. Oh man, that's all metal flake. So I preemptively bought a fitting. I think it may be too large. We'll see. I don't know, man. I think I might be able to get that to work. I gotta look up some on the internet, make sure I have the correct tap size, I believe is the right one for an MPT thread. If I can get this to work, it'll save him. The short block. Now I get my tap and die set and see if we have a winner. I think we're gonna be able to save it, William. Studs, not so much. A little sketchy, but I think it'll work. Check my progress. Dude, I think we might actually get this. Might have to drill it out a little bit farther, but. Yeah, screwed. I'm worried if I drill more, I'm gonna hit the freaking oil port and then it's all over. I don't wanna go farther than I have to. There's our new thread. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world. That is as deep as I'm willing to go without risking hitting an oil galley. So we will just uh, call this a win for now. I'm gonna MPT thread tape it, throw it in there. I gotta drop the pan still, but I think that should be it. And I'm gonna be very careful when I thread this in. I'm gonna load it up with tape, saves him an engine block. I'm putting on way more thread tape than I normally would in this scenario. That's a lot of thread tape. Oh, I think it's gonna work. She's solid, son. And if that leaks, we JB weld it. But I don't think it will. That's a wrap. Now it's the reversal of install, essentially. We'll take the pan off and clean it, but honestly, that is, in my opinion, the proper way to fix worst case disaster situation like this. The amount of metal we pulled out behind that backing plate that would have ended up in the pan and in the engine, this thing would have been a rod bearing or a main bearing, and it would have been in to see us eventually for a short block. So I think we uh, saved the day here, kept him from having to put an engine in it, hopefully. So we'll put it back together, get it back in the car, finish up the airless separator install for him. But essentially our fix for this, with, with how damaged the threads were, was we ultimately drilled it out a bit larger, ran instead of the British pipe thread, the BPT fitting, we converted it over to NPT, simply because it's much easier for us in the States to get NPT thread taps and inserts than it is to get a British standard thread. Thread taped it, did it as tight as I felt comfortable, and I think we're gonna have a solid repair that's gonna last. So hopefully to give this guy some good news and save his day. Cool. Oh, perfect.